There we go. Yo. That's why I say I see two New, two New York Yankee hats. I guess they was able to see my brother, and I wasn't. Um, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tapping in with us on the Flowway Show. Um, special guest tonight for those who was just tuning in. Share the live, share the live. Um, we have a very special guest. Um, this guy's an incredible talent. Um, he's an actor. He's a comedian. Um, you may have seen him in Ballers on HBO. You may have seen him in The Hustle on his early, um, early on in his career. Um, Tales from the Hood Three. <clears throat> me. Most recently, you've seen him in um, Power Book Three, Raising Kane and um, as Marvin, aka Uncle Marvin. Um, London Brown, man, London Brown to the show. I show him some love in the comments. Thank you, my brother. Yo, man, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, man. Blessings, blessings. How you feeling, man? How you feeling? You know, you had an incredible season, um, and you know, I, you know, we 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 we've seen your work. Um, how you feeling, man? I, I'm pretty sure you probably probably just feeling blessed and highly favored at this point in your life, man. Your career. You know, uh, it is cool to just be. It's cool to be working and, uh, you know, doing the thing that uh, just being an artist for me. So, but like right now, I'm like, I'm just burnt out because like this week I've been going in at, you know, uh, 5 a.m. to work. So it's just long days, but then it's at night. I'm studying. And um, so I can just kind of, I'm just, I feel a little bit of wear and tear. I'm not complaining. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'd rather be, I'd rather be tired and working than well rested and not. Not working, especially these days, especially with uh, you know, with us going through this pandemic and everyone having to sit down for 15 plus months, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you know, that affecting affecting our everyday journey. I'm pretty sure you probably, you know, you could, could, um, you know, that comes with the game. You know what I mean? It comes with the, it comes with the game. Just. Uh, you know, your work ethic is, uh, we see you, man. We see you out here grinding, man. You keep grinding, my brother. Absolutely. I appreciate it, brother. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, you know, before we get into um, the power stuff, um, you know, I, I want to tap into a little bit about you more, um, you know, because to a lot of my followers and to the world, um, Raising Canaan may have been the first time some folks have seen you or may not. Um, so I want to tap into that a little bit and um, the beginning of your of your journey, and you know, being a kid from from South Central LA, um, one of the toughest toughest neighborhoods in, in the world, um, you know, what inspired you to go the route that you did to pursue acting, to pursue um, also being a stand up comedian? I'm not sure which came first for you, but what what what, was, what gave you that spark to to choose that path? I mean, uh, artistically. Uh, I should put it this way. The arts were always felt like it was always a part of my proclivity. So when it comes to just like when I was younger, I remember just doing the little school plays and all of that. Then I remember art classes. So anything that any anything that involved the performing arts, the arts in general, just was I just felt uh like I enjoyed that as a kid. I didn't know. I could say it felt like it felt natural. I didn't know that the idea of that, but I just knew I enjoyed it. So, as far as you know, the transition into my adulthood, I just always felt like I wanted to do the thing that I enjoyed doing. Um, so the arts was always it was always there. I I, I can't remember not uh, or ever hating uh, not doing them. You know what I mean? If it was something for a class assignment, we had to go home, we had to draw a sign, or we had to stand in the class and do a presentation. I was always up for that. So, you know, that, that worked for me. So now, to be able to do it and live off of it just lets me know that I was I was always in the right vein to be doing what I need to be doing. Um, so I'm just glad I had some, you know, a praying mother who would... Uh, so we stayed next door to gang members. We stayed five houses down from another set of gang members. So I remember my mother just praying when I was like ten. She just prayed that God would keep me so busy that I would get I wouldn't get caught up. And so I just I remember just being busy, always being busy. It was never I was never just a dude just chilling. Never, never had that was never my 
thing. In high school, I was in, I was in band and I did the theater. Then I was in church and I did summer basketball camp and different things. So it was always something going on. All your free time was uh, all your free time was tied up. You was but, uh, yeah. You was wearing tear then. <laughs> you know what I always, mean? <laughs> it was, it was always that man. But I, it was important that I, I was, that I was busy, man, because, like, again, I'm, I'm growing up in the hood, so I could have easily been influenced because of all my friends. I had a lot of friends who, you know, who was, uh, you know, game banging in the streets and all of that. You know, a lot of OGs I hung with, but they also looked out. You know what I mean? Because they, they knew that I wasn't supposed to be on that. Um, so they, they looked out and, you know, kept it cool with me, never forced me to have to, you know, pressure me to do anything like that necessarily. Uh, so I, I got, I mean, I'm fortunate enough. I got through. Everybody don't make it through, but I got through. So, you know, it, it worked out for me. That's a fact. Be blessed. Be blessed. Um, you know, you started on Ballers. Um, I know that's one of the first times that I've I seen you. Yeah. Um, I've seen you work on Ballers. Um what five seasons or so um yeah yeah right on right on five seasons um and you know what's something that you know you, you carried from from being on that stretch of a, of a show um i don't think i've seen anything quiet to that with you um being on that stretch of a show from from working with the one you know dwayne johnson right um, and, and and the rest of the cast you know what's something that you carried during that time period that that you know we can see um play out in your career? you know what i think it was a. Uh, <clears throat> The cool thing about, because I did a show before that called uh, The Hustle. We did one season of that six episodes on a show called, I mean, on a network uh, on Fuse. Shout out to Princess Penny. Princess Penny was the creator of the show called The Hustle. He's also a showrunner over there with Issa Rae with, um, with Insecure. So shout out to him because he took a shot on me. So it's important that I mention that because Coming from theater, I had to learn how to make the transition from theater onto TV. And so it started with that first TV show, just learning how to not play everything big, which we're taught in theater, and learn how to play within the frame. So I learned some stuff from that, and I took that to Ballers. So by the time I got to Ballers and I, and I was playing across Dwayne, uh, a lot of my stuff, I was able to kind of go toe to toe as far as like our presence, our presence on screen. It was able to work because of all the stuff that I got from theater and the, and the quick stuff that I had learned from the previous TV show. So it was kind of really learning uh, how to take advantage of the camera on Ballers, so that by the time Raising Canaan came, I you know I'm in a totally different groove of knowing that now when the camera's on me, this is when I do these things or save some, you know, I don't want to say save, but just when the camera's on me, when it's getting all my coverage or all my close-ups, that's when it's time to really deliver the goods. So it was like a crap, Ballers was like a crash course uh, that set me up for Raising Canaan. Um, also, just the discipline. I remember working with Dwayne and one morning, our call time was like, six in the morning and then I got to get a glass of water or something and then I, I saw Dwayne like in the gym three four in the morning I was like yo that's mad early right now but he was in there and I that, I decided you know before I go on set you know just to hit the gym and, and help me tap into a focus so by the time I get on set I'm high alert um, and I'm ready to I'm ready to get the, the job done because I'm really focused so some of those small things I try to bring with me, man, and uh, and I'm gonna take some stuff I'm sure from Raising Canaan on to the next project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. You know, I, I saw that you did um, stand up comedy, right? Yeah. Um, at what point in your career did that come for you? Um, you know, was, was that before your first before your first film project? Um, how did how did that how did that pan out for you? Well, I think funny people. Humbly, I think that funny people, that's just something that they're born with. Like the, being funny is a timing thing. I think that certain people have it, others don't. For example, 
you ever met you like you ever hang around somebody that tries to be funny but they just they just really giving. annoying and not giving what they're supposed to get right but more so we tend to be annoyed with people who try to be funny that's because the timing is poor like they don't have any timing so sometimes they say they say a joke and they don't nobody laughs or they see a joke and it's like yo not right now because people are crying they ain't got no timing so I've always felt like my timing was pretty decent, just growing up as a kid and making people laugh and all of that. And then, so coming from theater, I remember feeling that energy from the audience when I would do theater. And then I realized that I can get that same feeling doing stand up. And so it was theater first, and then stand up worked out. Um, and then, so my transition was pretty was pretty seamless because. Stand up is really like a one man act anyway, a one man show anyway. So it ain't really super difficult. It ain't like I went from roofing into stand up. Theater is a stage, stand up is a stage. Theater is connecting with the audience, a live audience. Stand up is connecting with a live audience. So it, it, it worked it worked well for me. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Except, you know, you know, it, it goes hand in hand anyway. You know what I mean? It goes hand in right hand. Right on. Still moving people in a way, in both, right, right, right. Stage, in both in both um places, um you know on on stand up you're you're you could be taking your real life you know um stories of someone else's real life story and um putting that comedy twist to it where people can laugh about certain things that they're not normally able to laugh about um right and bring joy to people that way and on screen you can um give those stories in, in, in a different way as well so. Right on, right on. Super dope, triple threat. Um, I read somewhere um, that you also did dance. Is that you? I don't know if that was the saloon or not. I did. Um, I did. I did uh, some dancing for sure. I mean, you do the arts. You, you do theater. You gonna you you gonna dance at some point doing theater. Okay. You know that kind of thing. So, yeah, I was doing that and paying bills that way too. Teaching and at school programs, boys and girls clubs, and then. You know, uh, I just choreographed a few other different things along the way. So I was just hustling and just trying to put it all together. Put that out. Yeah, man. Yeah, you got the talent to do it all. Why not? You know what I mean? Hey, man. You know what? Once people realize, man, that our gifts are not for us. Once you realize that your gifts are not for us, then you want to try to. I'm, I'm trying to exhaust the possibilities of whatever it is I can do. You know, I'm mm -hmm. be glad enough to be able to. You know have a, a a couple little talents you know what i mean so i'm like man if i can use them and and and, and share them then that's what i'm gonna do man the last thing i want to do is feel like i left some stones unturned you know uh because i would have been wasting my time mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to leave, leave no uh no bags on the table right right <laughs> that's what i'm saying you want, you want no checks on the table at the same time um you know why not get paid to do something that you love to do um, you know, I I want to I want to tap into everybody keep mentioning ladies and Kane, I want to tap into that um, as well. You know, how did you get that role um, as Uncle Marvin? Did, did you get called? Was it an audition? Like, you know, how did that kind of thing all all pan out? Uh, so interestingly enough, I just finished Ballers, and um, I, at the time, me and my agent we had parted ways. So I was agentless, and my man just was like. Um, my my manager was like, "Yo, there's this young agent, and he's interested, and he's familiar with your work." So I was like, "All right, cool." And um, we we had a quick little like a ten minute meeting, real quick. We just kind of introduced each other, and and and, and had a little quick powwow. And then he said, "Yo, man, I got this audition for this this show," and um, he told me it 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 was on the on the description. It said like power, but I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was power because I was seeing billboards and, and TV ads that power was in and it was on the season finale. So I said, well, maybe this is a fake title for on the audition because they'll do that to protect the project from getting out. So long story short, I auditioned, uh, did like seven auditions. It started in December of 2019. And then I got the call like February of 2020. And, um, 
you know, I it was just it was just a it's just a process. You send in tape after tape, and then as they start to wind it down, then you go in and meet with meet with the creators of the show, the producers, and all of them. And then if they if you fit if you fit the mold, and uh, and then they, they give you the call. And then, so for me, fortunately, it worked out, and uh, I got the call. I was in L.A. at the time, and then um, them to work on a show, I moved to New York. Just like that. You know, was, yeah, you, was, you, was you familiar with, with, with Power Fire 2? Uh, did you ever watch it? Would you ever no. watch it at all? Or it's all new to you. I didn't watch it at all. I didn't watch it at all because at the time, I was filming Ballers. So I wanted to be on Power because I knew that the streets and the people I hung with on the regular, they watched Power. Like, I, I mean, a lot of people watch Ballers, obviously, I mean, it, it was number one, you know, for all five seasons, so it did well, it did, but it was just a different audience. So, I get it. I, you know what I mean? So I really wanted to be on Power, but I was like, dang, I'm grateful for what I got, so I ain't going to watch Power. And then I don't really watch TV, no way. So I just was off, uh, you know, uh, the most I watch is Martin, Hell's Kitchen, and like three You didn't watch Ballers when you was on it? No, I still got to watch Ballers. <laughs> um, I didn't get it. I, I meant, I meant to, but what happened, what was happening too was Sunday nights. I was in the comedy clubs and different things like that. I was on the road or something, so I haven't really sat down and just watched it. Um, and, and people would send me different clips and things like that. And that's the same thing with Raising Canaan. I haven't watched Raising Canaan yet, but I know from the clips that people send me, I kind of know what's going on with the, what's going on with the show. But um. But yeah, it kind of, it, you know, this whole this whole thing was it's just been a process, man. It's been a grind, and so I'm just I'm just glad to be working and and things are falling in place as I get in line. So I ain't got no complaints, man. No complaints. Wow, man, you, you got to go back and watch your work, man. You got to see what you. Uh, yeah, I you am. You got to see what everybody see. You got to see why everybody is mad at Marvin and they love Marvin at the same time. That's yeah, you know, but honestly, <laughs> low key, like people. They, it, there's a love hate thing that they have it's for a love, but it's the same thing they had with Reggie. Like in season one, people hated Reggie, and then by season five, it was a different thing. So, I like making characters very, you know, layered and complex with issues, and and and, and not that all of them are dark. Because Reggie wasn't a dark kind of a character, but I like, I like people to be conflicted in their minds about how they feel about him. Because that's how we are with, with people in real life. Nobody is just, we just like them all the time. Or we just dislike them. You know, when you think about, and not to go here, but to go here. When you think, when, I can't talk about everybody, but for us and, and black people, as a group, there's a lot of us conflicted about R. Kelly. They got to keep it real. If, if somebody's saying they're not conflicted, there are a couple people who just, they say no. But if we really keep it a buck, though, we like, man, we love this music. Every time we hear this song, people think about their exes. They think about their wedding reception. They think about graduation. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole. Across the board. Plethora of things. But then you think about how he lived his life. And that's why I think that, uh, you know, I think about that with Marvin, which is, Marvin, you know, in this sense, Marvin isn't a bad person. Marvin makes bad choices. And I'm not saying that Marvin and R. Kelly are the same thing. I'm not saying that at all, let's be clear. But what I'm saying is that there are a lot of issues within us as individuals. And the fact that when people look at Marvin, they have to decide kind of where they are with him or what they like about him. They, they have to address themselves and, and why they like him or why they don't. All of those things is what I want people to feel when they watch Marvin to to feel emotionally invested, so that when Marvin cries, you cry, or when Marvin laughs, you laugh, and 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 that's just the work that I have to do as a as an actor to create a substratum of things that make a character well rounded, or as best I can attempt to do that. Mm -hmm. well said. You know. What was what was something you did um, to prepare for this role? Um, you know, 
part of it is just um, being out in the streets of New York, you know what I mean? Uh, just being around the people on a regular is one of those things. But also a lot of what I, a lot of what I'm pulling from for Marvin, I grew up around a lot of OGs. So no matter what hood you from, there's some, some core basic principles uh, that the streets function by or live by. And those are some of those things that I, that I personally have been able to use as an adult. It's just, I used to hang, when I was young, I used to cut hair at rehab centers. And um, so I used to talk to ex dolphins, ex, ex murderers, gang members, <laughs> prostitutes, uh, junkies, you name it. You name it, I was around them. So I used to soak up the game and just how to move and, and, and those sorts of things. So when it come down to Marvin, it's just connecting some of those dots. And um, little things like loyalty, you know what I mean? And and, 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 and Marvin is definitely that. Uh, even though I know a lot of people feel like he's irresponsible at times, but who isn't though? Who hasn't been late? Who hasn't been late on a car note? You know what I mean? Who hasn't been late to class? Whatever your situation is. And I think sometimes in our society, we're so quick to point fingers because their issues don't match our issues. And that's where it gets, and that's why it gets wild. So that's, so when it go back to this R. Kelly thing, and not to keep bringing this up, but since it's the current thing in the news, mm -hmm. it's easy for people to say, we're going to throw stones at R. Kelly for this thickness of his behavior. Because it is, it is a sickness to think that that's okay to be doing that. But at the same time, as people, what we tend to do is we put, we weigh dirt differently, mm -hmm. right? So that's why, this is why also people conflict when they go to church. Because the preacher may say, you know, having sex, premarital sex is not right. But at the same time, if he's going home and he's talking down to his wife, that ain't right. Or if he's abusing his kids, that ain't right. So, but what we do is we'll say, all right, if you have a premarital sex, that sin is, is like, let's say, out of one through 10, that sin is, that's like a 10. But then he's going home and he's abusing his kids. But since it's his kids and it's, and it's, and it's his family, that, that dirt is only worth it's okay. five. Look, if we're gonna be righteous on righteous, that and this and what R. Kelly doing and people who are drinking their livers away, all of it is dirt. If we're gonna go there, if, if we ain't gonna be on the straight up on the straight up, then that's why we can't be looking at other people and saying that that thing is wrong and I can choose it. You know I what I mean? That's why I don't funk, I don't try to function in that kind of headspace because that my judgment is also that's not cool. So that's the that's that's the equivalent to other people's dirt. If we if we break if we break it all the way down to the undergird of it. So all of this is to say that with 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 Marvin and with Reggie and these other characters, I'm just trying to make them real people so that when people see them, they connect and they say. Oh man, my uncle like that, or my father was like that. Or when I run into people on the street, they say, "Yo, I'm Marvin. I know what that's like. I be messing up. I'm trying to do better." But you know what I mean. So once I know that I'm connecting with something real, then I feel like I'm getting closer to what I'm supposed to be doing, which is my job. All the way in, all the way in. You know, and that's the thing. Like when I when I look at Marvin, it's like he's he's loyal. He's loyal. He's loyal as fuck. Um, you know, he didn't he didn't messed up a couple cars for the family. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, he's always there, always on time, and it seems like sometimes he's underappreciated, and um, that's why sometimes he moves the way that he moves. Um, but you can you can you can clearly see that when it comes down to protecting the family, that he's going to be all the way in, all the way there. Um, you know, I don't I don't like what Marvin did to Juice Box. Right. Um, that I think that was the scene where I was like, you know, fuck you, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, 
everything else I was able to sympathize with and, and look at his character and say, okay, I can see with why he would do this. I may not agree with it, but I can see why he would do this. I think that um that scene there, was that one of the, was that all season, was that one of the hardest, uh, toughest, I would say, uh, scenes to shoot when him and Duke's box was going at it, or was it another scene? No, that was the, that was, that was the roughest one. The roughest one, the toughest one, the most, you know, draining emotionally and physically. Uh, that was a lot, man, because I just had to make sure that it was justified. Because, I, you know, because sometimes on TV, man, different things, I mean, first of all, shout out to Sasha Penn that head right over there in the show running and everything. But sometimes, you know, you watch TV and they'll add some drama in there just to add some drama. And it ain't really connected to nothing, honest. But speaking to the writers, speaking to my friends in LBGT, you know, they told me that that's a real thing, that 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 still happens to this day. Yeah, you know, when when children try to you know come out and say, hey, this is what I'm feeling, and the parents tear them down, you know, and that's not cool, you know what I mean? So when we put it all in perspective, we talking about we talking about in the '90s. And Marvin is an OG. Uh, Marvin is not one of them parents that let the kids do and talk and say whatever it is they want to say. Like now, I think there's been a breakdown of respect for parents. You know, he would just the kids just go go and talk and just, like no no reverence, no, no ceremony, no sitting on nothing, no ceremony in the way that they talk to the to adults. Period. Not even forget they even relate it. You know what I mean? So. With Marvin, man, Marvin knew that he he messed up, and that's something that Marvin got to deal with. You know, that's why after he finished going there with her, he broke down. And the and, and the thing about it is, that was a layer that was dis- that's a, a a layer of Marvin that got played and discovered and and was re- revealed in front of everybody. Like a lot of these layers to Marvin. You guys as an audience don't necessarily see. That's just me as an actor having to do the work to create that stuff. But that particular moment was revealed to the audience. Like Marvin now has to deal with that, you know, as he tries to rebuild or if he can rebuild, if his daughter even wants to rebuild some sort of relationship with him. And so I hope that as people watch, they'll, you know, maybe some, hopefully maybe something clicks in their mind about how that's not cool. You know, because sometimes people, we, we do, our, we do our, we out here in these streets sometimes and, and, and we're moving about nefariously, but sometimes not until we see ourselves. And we're like, oh man, dang, that's how I've been moving. I didn't even, I didn't even know I sounded or I looked like that. But I hope that somebody, somebody who's been living that way as Marvin did and, and hitting on their children or whatever, or their girl, they look at that and they be like, yo, man, I didn't know I looked that crazy. And who knows? Hopefully, maybe some redemption from that quick scene. Um, you know, and that's what we hope is art. We hope that people get to walk away, you know, with mm-hmm. something, you know. So, or at least that's what I'm hoping for. So we'll see, man. Mm. You know, um, you know. So, so you definitely could sympathize with, you know, the way Marvin carries himself overall. Yeah, I mean, I. I I understand Marvin. Like I said, I've hung out with a bunch of Marvins in my life, so I I I know I know Marvin. You know what I mean? And, and from according to the streets, a lot of them know Marvin too. So, you know, Marvin's a, Marvin's a real person. Marvin's not a TV. He's not just some fictional character. Marvin is a real dude. Real issues, but he he charming, but he's smooth. He got. He he loyal, so he come back on you if you messing with his family. He got love for his family, a little irresponsible at times, but he's well dressed, well manicured, well put together. Keeps his car clean, so he's an alpha male. He just troubled at times. Do, do Marvin got good um, car insurance? Marvin ain't got no insurance. <laughs> That's what I gotta tell everybody. Marvin ain't got no insurance. Marvin is a. Oh, wait, is it, wait, do you, you curse on your show? Yeah, yeah, we do it all, bro. Marvin, people got to understand, Marvin is a real street nigga. He's not a dude who playing street. Like, Marvin, 
first of all, the cars that Marvin's driving ain't even in his name because of all the product and different things that's being moved out and about around Marvin, with Marvin, and so forth. So Marvin ain't, we talking about in the 90s. And so what people, what people got to also understand is that back in the day, insurance wasn't man, though, like it is now. Like now, it's, it's become, oh, a few years ago, it's become like, you know, proof of insurance, uh, registration proof of insurance, driver's license. It's a kit. Back in the day, it was it was just the license, you, you know, probably maybe your car stuff. But Marvin ain't think about no insurance. Marvin ain't finna stand in no line and no DMV. You're not finna give all, <laughs> he ain't finna give all that personal information out. Marvin is very private. You know what I mean? So he ain't got no insurance. You know, Marvin, not, Marvin, Marvin, Marvin fucking them whips up and spinning the block with a new one. He, he and, and, and if it also even that, hmm. Marvin is Marvin is not messing up these cars because he's a bad driver. That's that's the that's the joke that makes no sense to me. But I understand we got a young audience sometimes. People just they, you know it's, it's entertaining. But people got to understand Marvin is not in a grocery store parking lot just bumping in the cars like like the niggas 87 years old and, and can't see. Marvin is disrupting anything that potentially can harm his nephew and his brother. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Two, Marvin is being shot at with a, with all types of guns. That's, that's two. Three, after Marvin left Rock, because Rock said, you know, hey, I want you out of here. Whatever product you got, go take it to Lou. I'm done with you. Marvin, people don't know this part, though. This this is my, the backstory that I'm creating with Marvin. Marvin pulled over, feeling a little low, pulled over, got him a little Hennessy. Got him a little Hennessy, a little, you know, a little coke. Took a couple shots, and he went back on a roll. When people think of it on those kind of layers, then it's going to make sense. So right now, people, people act like Marvin, Marvin, people act like it's like 12 noon on a Sunday on an empty block where everybody at church, Marvin just in the middle of the street, just crashing in the car. No, 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 no. He putting that work in. He, 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 protect, he protecting the family. He That's the all family. I'm saying. That's all I'm saying to the to the to, to younger audiences. Put it in that perspective. You know what I mean? And then they'll realize, like, yo, because he got love for his family, ain't no car, ain't no fancy Benz no. worth the, the life of his nephew or his brother. He going out blazing with whomever, whatever he gotta do, he gonna say them. So I mean, but I do. I just appreciate people. I appreciate all the means. All the stuff is funny anyway, and the insurance and the, you know, all of it. When when Marvin squinting his eyes, he about to tear something up. I like all the memes, all the energy. So because it lets me know that people are invested into the show. So that's great. I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you, man. You know, you know, shifting gears um for a minute. You know, how do you feel, right? Um, because as you see, you know, things are kind of changing. Um, when it comes to um black actors, you know, how do you, in the community, how do you feel about the shift, you know, with, you know, going from, you know, the pioneers, um, to, you know, pretty much close to retirement um, at this time to a lot of fresh faces on the scene. Do you think that it's tough shoes to fill? Do you think that, you know, your generation of, of actors who's coming up is, is doing a great job? How do you feel about that? You know, it's one of those things where um, I like, Sometimes, sometimes, you know, because you get shut down, it causes you to stand up on your own, too. Point being is that if it wasn't for the, if it wasn't for some of these, like, Hollywood ways, we wouldn't have a Tyler Perry. You know what I mean? And whether you are a fan, whether people are a fan of his work or not, or Forget what you pers what you feel about him personally or his work or whatever the situation is. You gotta respect the man for doing it his way, the independent route and making stuff for his audience, hands down, and for all the employment that he's given to black people, or, or, or out there in Atlanta and bringing Hollywood to Atlanta because Hollywood's only L.A. and New York. Those are core places. Now you got some other places, you know, Chicago doing some stuff. You Every now and again, catch some independent stuff in Vegas and uh, Louisiana down there, Miami, different places. But we got to give it up to them kind of cast. And then a lot, and, and to the Easter Rays and a lot of and other independent people 
who just started on YouTube with different things and just say, yo, we're we finna make it happen. Because that resistance caused people to create their own content. And so I think that part of it is dope. Um, but then I'm also glad, it's, it's dope to see the the younger cats, um, the, the, um, like for the Michael B. Jordans coming up and, and through and making it in, in, in the chat with Peace Be Upon Him. Just that new crop of young cats, you know, doing their thing and getting busy. So I, I'm I'm always inspired by it. I'm excited for, for the new faces. But also you got, but at the same time, we already know who the, who the OGs are and the people who laid the action work, the, the Wesley Snipes, the Will Smiths, and of course the Denzels, and the Don Cheetahs, the Forrest Whitakers. So it's a lot of cats, you know what I mean, who, who put the, in, in, in the Sydney party, you know, Sydney, of course, party and all, you know, everybody, but it's a lot of people that laid the foundation down, man, so that younger cats, even like myself, can just kind of move the way we move throughout it and book what we book, man. So everybody plays a part, you know. Salute to the OGs. Um, you know, who's, you know, out of, out of the guys you mentioned, who's some of those people, who's, who, who's uh, some of the people that you, you drew inspiration from? Uh, some of the people, you know, as far as work, I really admire, of course, was just the people I named, man, like the Don Cheadle. I'm just seeing Don Cheadle's career early on, you know, back when he was doing colors, you know what I mean? Had like that little one line in colors or whatnot. And you see, you look up and you realize like, yo, and you, you go from that, from playing the thug and the goon, he just stay, he just stay encapsulated with just that role. And then you go look at something like Hotel Rwanda. And be like, woo, Hotel Rwanda, he gave, I mean, just got busy. Um, and even with, you know, Forrest Whitaker, he's seeing some of the stuff he does, and or even in, in, in Idris. And it, I mean, when you sit back and you watch the work, it's like, these guys, I remember, and I was, not, you know, I remember when I was younger, I used to have a little folder and inside the folder. I had the album covers. It's back when CDs was, was big. I used to have the CD covers of Dead Presidents. Cause I was a big fan of Lorenz Tate and Chris Tucker, and then you, and then I remember Mo Better Blues. Hard, by the way. Say it again. I said that joint was hard, by the way. Come on, man, their <laughs> presidents, and then you got Mr. Society, and Mr. Society grew up out. That's L.A. Boys in the Hood, seeing a young Cuba and um, and Morris Chestnut getting busy, and Q when he was just doing the acting thing. I mean, just doing, he was doing the rapper's thing, but he was doing the acting thing. And then you see him now, we get on the directing and the writer's thing in that kind of way. I mean, all that stuff is is, is dope inspiration, man, to to aspire to. You know, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a, um, a break, right? We're gonna do uh, this game that I do, this or that. Um, I know you told me you don't drink, right? So what I'm gonna do is, right? Everyone that's watching and myself, so pretty much we're gonna give you two options. And actually, some of the some of the choices that we have is um some of the people that you just named, right? So you have to choose one, right? Okay. And if you don't, you know what I mean. You just say whatever draw, and myself and everybody else watching, right? Uh, okay. So watching, we all gonna take a shot. All okay. Right? Gonna get us drunk. Ready? NWA or Dog Pound? That's how we. That's how we coming out the gate. <laughs> Woo, man, bro, God, uh, I gotta give it up to. I gotta give it up to the. I gotta give it to the foundation. I gotta give it to NWA. Okay, good choice. Ice T or Ice Cube? Now, now I know Ice Ice um, T had moved to the West Coast, but he's still West Coast because he been yeah, West Coast. For I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Cube. Okay. Too short or one G? More in G. The game or exhibit? Oh gosh, man. Oh man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna go game. I'm gonna go game. Sure? Yep. Ooh, see, nobody got to take a shot right now. Um, <laughs> Minister Society or Boys in the Hood? Minister Society. That's good. Oh, okay. Friday or baby boy? Wait, say it again. 
Friday or Baby Boy? Friday. Poetic Justice or Jason Glover? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Oh man. I'm gonna go with Poetic Justice. Okay. 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 Um, Denzel Washington or Samuel Jackson? I'm gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Denzel. Okay. Richard Pryor or Eddie Murphy? Oh, Richard Pryor. Ah, you made it. You made it. <laughs> you made it. Man, I actually, I love. I, I mean, uh, I, I've done a few interviews. And I, I actually kind of enjoy the rapid fire, but y'all do get some good ones. Because sometimes you, I always feel like, I'm like, all right, I can kind of handle it. But y'all be picking some good ones because y'all put y'all y'all stack my cats up right against each other. Right against each other. That's how I, <laughs> that's how I did it. That's how we did it. Um, all right, cool. You know, um, what, what, what's something that, right, um, you could say, um, coming from South Central, right, coming from L.A., um, to, you know, folk. You know, um, boys, men who may come from your neighborhood or neighborhoods that were similar to your neighborhood, um, the same background as you, and they want to make it in the film industry. What's some tips? What's something you could give them? If they're watching. I would I would say this. With whatever it is you decide to do, make sure it's what you really want to do. Make sure it fulfills you because you'll burn out on it. If it's not, you'll give up. When you go after the thing that you love to do, there's a certain type of ebullience and a certain type of drive that comes with it so that even when you get rejected, when you get the nose, when the money ain't always there, or you gotta start at the bottom of it as far as the situation or, or the career move, there's another type of drive that kicks in because your heart is in it. So it gives you the energy to keep pressing. So that's the first thing. Make sure that you actually really want to do what it is you want to do. The next thing is, I would say, don't worry about the money. Don't worry about the money. The money, you get good. The money's gonna, the money's gonna be there. Don't, the money's gonna. That's part of it. Don't worry about the money. The money will come. Just focus on the craft. The third thing is, um, you gotta have discipline. Discipline over motivation. Discipline. Discipline is the thing that allows you to do it, you know, whether you feel like it or not. The discipline is you without nothing. We don't have anything without discipline. Um, discipline says you go when you don't feel like it. When the you know when the money is weird, when the weather is bad, you still putting in the hours to to hone down and beat down on your crap, which cracks open the success. So those would be the, the three. Make sure you do what you want to, make sure what you're doing fulfills you. Um, make sure, I think it said discipline. What was the second one I said? Um, wait, discipline. Hold on, my father, somebody on here gonna tell me. Do what you, make sure you do what you want to do. Oh, don't chase the money. That's what it was. Don't chase the money. Make sure you fulfill, don't chase the money. Because people get caught up in chasing the money. Right on, right on. You know, someone said in the comments, too, that um, if God gives you the idea to do it, um, then, you know, he's going to give you the tools, something like that. To kind of There you go. To, That's to, real to rap, man. Through. That's real rap. You know what I mean? To push you through. Um, great words of advice. I hope, um, I know that um, throughout this conversation, we probably if we inspired one person, you know, um, we did a good job. Um, any other projects that you're working on that we could probably look forward to? Anything else? Uh, there are a couple of things. There are a couple of things we'll probably have to come back and revisit for for that interview because some stuff they've been making we can't talk about it, talk about it. Mm -hmm. But you know, TV and films and all that stuff is still some stuff cooking, and uh, so and I'm still working on this book um, for the. Uh, I'm still working on this book and basically a book of photography, but um, some of the proceeds will be going to the homeless, and so this is a work in pro in progress. So. It's a couple of things, man, but we'll, I'm sure we'll chop it up again and, and we'll, we'll flush out those those ideas. Super dope, super dope, super dope, Marvin. I mean, um, London, London. He's not open, Marvin. Um, it's all good. It's all good. I ask everyone who come on here, right? Um, you know, what do you want your legacy to be? Man, at the end of the day, I just, I really just hope that people will be able to look back or or say things like, you know. That I was a solid, I was a solid individual. 
and I was, I was, I was kind, you know, in my heart, you know, um, and I think people understand. If they know, hang around me a little bit, they know the respect I have for my mother and my family. You know, I never want to try to embarrass them, but at the core, I just want to be, uh, you know, I just want to be a kind person. At the very least, I, I, I would hope to. Whether people stop talking to me today or tomorrow, I will hope that they can say, "Yo, for the small time that I, for the for the long time I've known I've I've known London, or for the short period of time that I had a chance to interact with London, he affected me in a positive way." That's all, you know. As long as you felt like, "Damn, I learned something, or I got something from him, uh, or I see things differently now," that's it. You know, I don't need nothing too crazy, man. I try to affect people in a positive way, leave my mark, and keep pushing, you know? Blessings. Blessings. Blessings, King. Um, what we all said, man, thank you for your time. Thank you for your energy. Um, uh, Raising Kane in season two, I know that's coming soon. Are you in the process of shooting already, or are you about to start filming again? Yeah, that's why I kind of why I jumped on here. Uh, you know, like, you know, eight minutes, ten minutes behind, whatever it was. I'm, I'm just getting there from set. So we shooting... Nope. We shoot right season. back at it. Yes, we we we've been we've been shooting since like July, so we've been in the mix. And season two will be out next summer. Dope, dope man. We can't we can't wait for it, my brother. Um, you in the city, right? You in New York, right? You live I'm in New, York. in New York. Got you, got you. Yeah, man. Um, blessings to you. We look forward to seeing um everything else that you got on the works. We're gonna come back. We're gonna chop it up soon. We have our new projects and things like that come out. Uh, season two, Raising Canaan, you heard it next year. Yeah, next year is too long. We know it is too long. I know, it, I know. That no. shit is kind of long, but you got to remember, it's other stuff that we get in the between time. Um, you know, 50 and Courtney got a lot of other stuff. Um, right. Uh, uh, Ghost is coming back. Um, I think in between time, we're going to get uh, Tommy. I think we're going to get Force or something like that in between time like that, too. So, you know, it's a lot of stuff for all the power fans to, um, to you know, to keep, to keep y'all entertained. Um, in between time, man. But thank you for the characters that you've given us, and you know, thank you for just putting, giving it to all, and uh, we appreciate you, man. Man, thank you for your platform, and let me share a couple words here, man. I appreciate you, brother. Peace and blessings to you and your followers, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate blessings, you. Blessings, bro. And, and, and I like, I like the um, the Nipsey blue, right? I like the hat. Listen, I listen. My, my wife knows, right, that I. Get Yankee hats in damn near every color, right? I, I'm always rocking the NY. I'm from New York. I'm from the Bronx. But I ain't got that one, so I gotta get my hands on that one. Yo, this one. Hold on. I got. I wish. Gosh, I wish I knew my man's name. I met him. I met him supporting something for Dave East and the bakery over in Harlem. But this is a young black man. So whenever he posts, I gotta tag him to it. But I've been, you know, sometimes when I do these interviews, I try to wear independent you know people's stuff black people in particular i know it was a young black dude he was just like yo man he just liked the show just like yo i've just got some some merch for you i was like oh bad man i'll plug your stuff so he he definitely getting busy you know what i mean so man he, he doing this thing man so i try to show people some love man where they stuff shout out also to the you know the bakery they got some stuff man so i try to do what i can do you know but I, when this when this comes out I, you know, throw it on my story and all of that so he can get his love. So, again, man, thank you, man. I'll, I'll, and once I tag him, then you can probably see what, you know, what he got. And maybe you can cop some stuff from him cool. as well. Cool. We'll talk soon, brother. Yes, man. I appreciate you, man. Peace and blessing. And thank you. Yes, sir. Salute. Salute. King. Salute. Peace.